Hello, my name is Nathan Vargis. I think you two are here for the BASF interview. How would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Ivan Felici and this is Ada Sanchez. Pleased to meet you. So first off, we never conducted a group interview. There's only two people here at BASF before. So we'll make this interview special for you guys. To test your skills as constant chemical engineers for our company, I will give you both a problem you'll have to solve that is very similar to the work we do here at BASF. Do you think you guys can handle it? Actually, you guys don't have a choice. Let's get on to it. Right, this doesn't look too bad. We need to solve this using the five steps of problem solving. Now, looking here, it seems that I need to find out the mass fraction of the hexane output stream. From there, we can convert the mass fraction to the mole fraction. Well, okay, that was pretty obvious, but what are you going to do from here? So we're given two independent variables, the hexane and the propane. And we have two unidentified variables, the mass of the hexane flowing out and the mass fraction of the hexane in the output stream. In addition, we have two uh, streams coming into the mixture and one stream leaving out of the mixture. We, uh, we know the hexane stream is a steady stream of 120 kilograms per of hexane per hour, and the propane stream is 1.36 kilograms of propane per minute. For convenience, we'll convert the 1.36 uh, kilograms of propane per minute into uh, pro uh, kilograms of propane per hour. That will be 86.1 kilograms per hour. 86.1, yes. I didn't know we had a calculator, right? Um, I mean, is that what you guys stick with? Wait, we're allowed to use calculators? No, actually, you know what, never mind. Well, we know that the total mass fraction of hexane would obviously be the output mass of hexane per hour over the sum of the mass of hexane outputted per hour plus the mass of propane outputted per hour. We also know that the mass fraction of propane is just one minus the mass fraction of hexane. Now, I will be assuming that the reaction is not taking place during the mixing process, but rather that mass is conserved and that the process is continuously at a steady state and that the flow, of, and that the flow throughout the process is continuous. I mean, we can check to make sure that we all have the necessary information by utilizing the degrees of freedom equation. Now, in order for this problem to be solvable, the degrees of freedom equation must take this form. Unknown variables subtract variables equals zero. Now, where our knowns are the values that still need to be determined, while variables are the number of independent variables in the system that we can determine. Since we have two unknowns, which that would be the mass, fl mass flow out and mass fraction of hexane, and the two variables, which are mass flow in of hexane and the mass flow in of propane, now, we can then plug them into that so that we have 2 minus 2 equals 0. So this problem is indeed solvable by the degrees of freedom equation. Finally, let's see you guys put some actual work this time. Now we'll assume that whatever goes into the mixture is going to come out of the mixture. So if we have uh, 120 kilograms per hour of hexane and 81.6 kilograms per hour of propane going into the mixture, we'll, we'll assume that nothing stays inside the mixture and a steady stream of N3, N.3 will contain both hexane and propane. So now we'll need to write down the general balance equation, which takes the form of input plus generation minus output minus consumption equals accumulation. Uh, now we're, we're assuming that there's no reaction that takes place in this process, so that's why generation and consumption can go to zero, and we're assuming that this is a steady state process, so that's why accumulation goes to zero. Now. Uh, now we're left with uh, input minus output equals zero, and we can reorganize that to get input equals output. So from that, we can write three uh, three balances, with, uh, the first being uh, n.1 plus n.2 equals n.3, uh, and the second one being n.1 equals y times n.3, and the third one, the third one being n.2 equals 1 minus y times n.3. Now using this information, we can solve the overall balance by plugging in the knowns of 120 kilograms per hour of hexane plus 81.6 kilograms per hour of propane, which will then equal N3, which equals 201.6 kilograms per hour. Moving on, we go into the hexane balance where we plug in the knowns of 120 kilograms per hour of hexane equals Y times N.3, which is 201.6 kilograms per hour. So we have 120 kilograms per hour divided by 201.6 kilograms per hour, which, equal, which will equal y, and y equals 0.595 unitless since the units cancel each other out. Now that we have the mass fraction of hexane, we can easily convert the kilomoles given the molar mass of each species. Now, uh, 
uh, to figure out the mole fraction of hexane, we take the moles of H divided by the total moles in the output, which is expanded right over here in this big long equation. So first off, to figure out the moles of hexane, we take the mass fraction of H, which is 0.595, multiplied by the total outflow mass, which is 201.6 kilograms per hour, divided by the, mole, the given molar mass of hexane, which is 86.18 grams per mole, over, once again, the moles of H, plus the moles of propane, which already has the given molar mass of 44.10 grams per mole, and all that equals into... Um, Zero point four two nine molar fraction of hexane. So to do that, we can use the propane balance, which is n dot two equals one minus y n dot three, and if we plug in our values n dot two and n dot three, we get eighty one point six kilograms per hour equals one minus y times two one point six kilograms per hour. Doing some algebra, we can divide by two one point six on both sides and we'll see that the units cancel out uh, kilograms per hour and we get 0.405 e unitless equals one minus y and if we solve for y we get 0.595 which is the exact same solution we got when we first solved the problem so now we can verify that we did the problem correct oh good job the problem you guys just solved is pretty much the same what we do at BASF almost every day as you guys know BASF is a chemical production company and so our job is to make products such as mixtures, such as diluted acids and bases, that can be used in various industrial settings by applying the five sets of problem solving to chemical processes that you guys have done here. While of course, there are a lot more steps involved in the work that we do, it seems that you both have a very good grasp on the concepts that make our company run. Welcome to the team.